These are the seasons and time zones notes. Seasons. The tilt of the Earth's axis is 23 and a half degrees. This tilt is what causes the seasonal changes. And in this picture, I like to ask, where is the sun in the picture? Hopefully, you're telling me that the sun is here in the middle of the picture. Obviously, this is one thing, and that's another thing, and they put it together into one picture. But if the sun was here, it would be here in the middle, because half the earth is illuminated with light. This half of this earth is illuminated with light, so the sun has to be here. It's also a good diagram to show that only half of the earth is ever illuminated at any one time. And then it shows you that this is the summer for the northern hemisphere, because the north pole is tilted towards the sun which is when we have summer in the northern hemisphere. And on the right side, it shows the winter solstice because the south pole is turned towards the sun, which is when they experience their warmer temperatures. And we are experiencing the cooler temperatures because we are facing now away from the sun so we don't get heated up as much. The winter solstice happens around December 21st or 22nd. And that's when the North Pole is in darkness for 24 hours. Because again, think about how we just talked about the North Pole being pointed away from the sun. So it doesn't get any sun at the winter solstice. The South Pole has continual daylight because it's tilted towards the sun, so it can't get away from it. And the sun is at its lowest point to us from our view in the Northern Hemisphere. Why do we have winter? Fewer hours of sunlight during the day, so it gets colder. The North Pole is tilted away from the sun. So again, we're not getting as much sun, therefore it's cooler. And the light rays are less direct because we're tilted away from the sun. So the sun rays aren't beating directly down on the Northern Hemisphere, so it's cooler. The vernal equinox. Vernal actually means spring. An equinox, think about the word equal, happens in March around the 21st or the 20, or excuse me, the 20th or the 21st. The sun is directly over the equator and every part of the earth experiences equal hours of day and night. You need to remember this is equinox, equal, and equator. The sun is over the equator at the equinoxes and giving all areas of the earth equal amounts of day and night. The summer solstice happens around June 20th or 21st. The south pole is in darkness because now it's turned away from the sun. The north pole is in the light for 24 hours because it's tilted towards the sun. And the sun appears at its highest point because in the northern hemisphere we are facing the sun and tilted closer towards it, or more towards the sun, not closer. Why do we have summer? The daylight hours are longer, so we have more time to heat up. And the sunlight is more direct because sunlight hits us straight down, heating us up more. The autumnal equinox, again equinox equal equator happens around September 22nd or 23rd. It starts the season of fall. And again, we get equal hours of day and night and the sun is directly over the equator. Equinox, equal, equator. And then in this picture, it's a little bit different than the one that's on your notes at the top of the right column, but you need to fill it in anyway. In your notes, the blank is right here to write vernal equinox. What you need to see out of this picture is that here's the sun, the sun rays are hitting directly at the equator, giving us equal amounts of day and night during March for the vernal equinox, which again you write on the line right here. Let's continue through the seasons. We are coming through spring, 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 coming into summer. Here's the summer solstice. The North Pole is tilted towards the sun, so it's going to be hotter for the Northern Hemisphere in the summer.
and the line for that on your notes is right between the sun and the picture of the earth. Keep coming all the way through summer. We're getting close to coming back to school. Here's the autumnal equinox to start fall. The line to write that is over here on your notes. Autumnal equinox happening in September. And again, the sun is hitting directly at the equator, giving us equal amounts of day and night during the equinox. Keep coming. Through fall, past Halloween, past Thanksgiving, over towards Christmas. Here is the Earth at the winter solstice. The North Pole is pointed away from the Sun, so it gets 24 hours of darkness. The South Pole is pointed towards the Sun, so it gets 24 hours of daylight. And the line to fill that in is between the Sun and the right picture of the Earth. So you fill in winter solstice in the blank here. Season misconceptions. Back down to the left column at the bottom. Many people carry the misconception that the seasons are due to the distance of the Earth from the Sun. However, consider the following facts. The Earth's orbit around the Sun is nearly a perfect circle. The Earth is slightly closer to the Sun in January and farther from the Sun in July. Perihelion, which is what means closest to the Sun, is around January 3rd when Earth is about 91 million 405,436 miles from the sun. Aphelion means farthest from the sun is around July 4th when Earth is about 94,511,989 miles from the sun. So really, if it was about distance, that's complete opposite. So it can't possibly be right. While it is winter in the northern hemisphere, it is summer in the southern hemisphere. If the seasons were due to our distance from the sun, both hemispheres would have the same seasons at the same time. And then this is a picture showing you the orbit of the Earth. The perihelion, the nearest point to the sun in orbit, shows you how many million kilometers instead of miles. Whereas the aphelion shows you the farthest point of the sun, again, in kilometers instead of miles. And then shows you the average orbit. In fact, the seasons are due to the tilt of the Earth's axis. Consider what happens on June 21st when the northern hemisphere of the Earth is tilted towards the sun. The sunlight strikes the ground more vertically than in December, so straight up and down. The light is spread out over less ground and heats the ground better. The sun is above the horizon for a longer period of time. And then here's a picture that shows you what's happening in the summer. The light's coming straight down and hitting us in a very concentrated area. That's why we get warmer faster. Whereas the lower the sun gets in relation to where we are, see how the light spreads out more and isn't as bright spreading out and you can't see it nearly as well so it doesn't heat us up nearly as well in the winter when the earth and the sun are at lower angles to each other. And then another tidbit of information where we get a.m. and p.m. at midday the sun is on your meridian. This occurs close to or at noon. A.m. comes from ante meridian means before midday so a.m. And p.m. comes from post-meridium, after midday. Now back to what it says in the notes. Time zones. With the advent of rapid travel by trains in the 19th century, it became necessary to standardize the time for all cities within a certain region. In November 1883, the railroad companies divided the United States into four time zones. Everyone in a time zone set their clocks to the same standard time. In 1884, an international conference was held in Washington, D.C. by 26 countries. The world was divided into 24 time zones, which each time zone being roughly 15 degrees wide in longitude. Time zones have been modified for political, social, and economic reasons. If you look at the globe and you look through the Pacific Ocean, that time zone line, which we'll also find out the name of in a minute, is very wiggly. It's not straight at all. Since there are 24 hours in a day, and 
360 divided by 15 equals 24. The time in each time zone differs by one hour. So 24 hours in a day. The Earth is a sphere, so it has 360 degrees in it. So you could divide 360 by 24 and get 15. That's why each of the different time zones is about 15 degrees wide in longitude. The International Dateline. Standard time gets earlier as you travel to the west. The International Dateline was established in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. That's what I was talking about a second ago. As you go from east to west, you gain a day as you cross the line. As you go from west to east, you lose a day as you cross the line. So that would be like you're coming from Monday and going to Tuesday. So you've not lived at all through Monday. You actually lost all day Monday if you go from west to east. And then here's a picture of the different time zones. Take a look again at the United States. How many time zones does the United States have in the contiguous United States? Hopefully you're telling me four. Don't include Alaska and Hawaii in that. It's just four in the United States. And then another interesting thing. We're on the same time zone as the western side of South America. All of that purple stuff is on the same time we are, eastern time. Daylight saving time. It's not daylight savings time. There's no S on the end of saving. During the late spring, summer, and early fall, we set our clocks ahead to have an extra hour of daylight at the end of the day. This change in time is called daylight saving time. The idea of changing our clocks was first used in the United States during World War I to conserve energy. The way to remember it is that you spring ahead an hour and you fall back an hour. So think about whether we're still under daylight saving time now or not. And then the other misconception that I've heard is that when we talk about the day being longer, some people actually think we're talking about adding time to the day. Never is a day longer than 24 hours. When you talk about having a longer day or a shorter day, the days are getting shorter, the days are getting longer, it just means the amount of daylight that we see during that 24 hours is changing.